Today we're going to talk about eight of the most common error codes on Galt electric variable frequency drives. So here we have a Galt 300 series drive, and here we have a couple of Galt 200 series drives. These are the smaller horsepower drives, and the 300 is slightly more expensive, but more powerful in terms of its functionality. Now each of these drives has a display on it, so if you enter an alarm state or a fault state, you will see an error code come onto the display that on the 300 series drives and here on the 200 series drives. It's very important that you note that alarm code before you reset. If you reset the drive, the alarm code goes away. You don't know why the drive tripped. That's very important information to tell you why it is that that drive is either in alarm or tripped. Now, in order to troubleshoot, the best place to go is the Galt manual. And if you go to the troubleshooting section of the manual, you can see here, this is the 300 series manual. In the first column, you will see the error code. In the second column, it will tell you what the probable cause is of that er error code. Um, and then over in the last column, it will tell you the solutions or how to uh, troubleshoot that. In addition, if you go further on in the troubleshooting guide, you will see complete algorithms taking you through a troubleshooting sequence to help you to isolate the cause of that fault. Now, in most cases, all you need to do is reset the drive, change some parameters in order to get the drive not to enter that fault state. But in some cases, you will it will indicate that there is actually a failure in the drive and that the drive will require repair. Before we look at the actual error codes, a word about reliability and safety. In order to get long, trouble-free service from your drive, you are going to need to do three things. Keep the drive cool, keep the drive clean, and keep the drive dry. So make sure it's in an area that doesn't have excessive moisture or any kind of condensation. Make sure that the fans are working and that it's an area in which it will be cool and uh, it will give you long, trouble-free service. Now let's talk a little bit about safety. First of all, never touch an energized drive where you can actually touch the terminals unless you have the proper PPE or personal protective equipment. If you get a fault on an electrical system, it could cause an arc flash and can cause severe injuries. So anytime you're measuring the input or the output voltage or anything with a meter, make sure that you're dressed appropriately. Finally, in this drive is a capacitor. Now that capacitor, basically all drives have a capacitor on the DC bus, and that capacitor is like a reservoir. It holds a charge of energy. If you disconnect the power from this drive, the capacitor will remain energized. There are resistors in here that will discharge it over a period of time, but you need to wait maybe 15 minutes for that capacitor to discharge to a safe level. Make sure that you wait and then you use a meter to actually measure the voltage on the negative and positive bus or across that capacitor before you actually touch anything within the drive. Now the first set of error codes have to do with overcurrent. There are two types of overcurrent, that due to short circuit and that due to overload. Make sure that your motor and your cables are measured and that there is no short circuit in the system. If you get an error code then from overcurrent, it's probably two things. Number one, incorrect programming. Make sure that you have the full load amps of the motor, the horsepower, the voltage, that all of the parameters that apply to the motor are proper for that motor. Secondly, if you get an overcurrent, probably it's because you're trying to get too much torque from the motor, and that could be either you, your motor is simply overloaded, or it could be that you're trying to accelerate too quickly. The second set of parameters we're going to talk about is the overvoltage parameters, OV1, OV2, OV3. First, make sure that the voltage is programmed correctly in your drive. Second of all, make sure that the voltage coming into the drive is within the required rating of that drive, so you may need to measure the voltage with a voltmeter. If both of these are the case, then probably what's happening is you have power that's coming back from the motor and trying to go into the utility. The drive can power the motor from the utility just fine, but it's not designed to take power from the motor and pass it back to the utility. So if you have something like a fan that you're trying to slow down too fast, 
you're trying to slow it down too fast and it's pushing power back and that power gets trapped on the capacitor of the drive and causes an over voltage. This is a very simple fix. Just simply slow down your deceleration time and you will be fine. If on the other hand, you have something like a downhill conveyor where you have no choice and that power is going back into the system or something like an elevator, you may need to install resistors on the DC bus or purchase a fully regenerative drive. Contact your dealer for more information on this. The third error code we're going to talk about is under voltage. Under voltage is just what it sounds like. The voltage is too low. Now check that the drive is programmed correctly and then measure the voltage to make sure that the voltage is within the uh, rated voltage of the drive. The correction for under voltage is generally finding out what's causing that voltage to go too low and correcting the cause of the under voltage. The fourth is motor overload, which is code OV1. The, your drive is going to try to protect this motor from over temperature and therefore it needs to know the motor full load amps and the motor voltage and the motor horsepower. Make sure that those are all correctly programmed in the variable frequency drive. If you get an overload trip, it may be due to the fact that your motor is too small and therefore the motor actually is overloaded or it could possibly be because the motor is running too slow. As the motor rolls down, there is a fan on the shaft of the motor and that fan cools the motor. So if you're running the motor at too low a speed, the fan on the shaft gives the motor uh, insufficient cooling and the drive may try to trip that motor in order to prevent it overheating because it knows that it's not getting the amount of cooling that it requires. In this case, you may need to program the drive to tell it that the drive can handle that or you may need to get a different type of motor, such as a blower cooled or non-ventilated motor, if you really need to run that slow. If you don't, run faster and you will avoid that trip. Number five is input phase loss, which is code SPI. These are three phase drives. That means that all three phases must be attached and must be active in order for the drive to run correctly. If you lose one of those phases, the drive will go to an input phase loss in order to protect itself. Now, in this case, obviously the fix is to find out which wire has come loose or which phase has gone and correct that and then you will be back in business. Now, these drives have the ability to be able to run on single phase, to take single phase in and three phase out. If you want to do that, you must tell the drive to ignore that input phase loss code. Number six is output phase loss or SPO. Now, there are three phases that go to the motor. If one of those phases stops conducting current, the drive will trip on output phase loss. This could be because one of the wires has come loose. It could be because you've had a motor failure and one of the windings in the motor has failed and opened up. But the fix for this is to make sure that you have a healthy motor, test the motor to make sure that everything is acceptable and make sure that all your connections are tight and that you have the same amount of current in each phase. The seventh is overheating, OH1 and OH2. Now this means that the VFD itself is getting too hot. The main reason for this is loss of cooling. The first thing I would check is to make sure that your fans are working. If the fan fails, then you will receive a loss of cooling in the drive and that will cause the drive to get too hot and to trip. Secondly, make sure that the drive is in an area where it can get adequate ventilation. Don't put the drive in a sealed box and make sure that the ambient area is not so hot that it will cause the drive to overheat. Remember, drives must be kept cool, clean, and dry for reliable operation. Number eight is ground fault, code ETH1 and ETH2. What is a ground fault? It means that one of those three output phases is actually going to ground. This could be because of a cable insulation failure. It could be because of a motor failure. It could be because the area in the conduit box of the motor is improperly taped and something is touching ground. So what you want to do is disconnect the three phase leads from the VFD and then do a high pot test. In this case, it will tell you which of those phases is grounded 
and you will be able to then find the cause of the ground fault and this will enable you to get back in operation. Do not do a high pot test with the cables connected to the drive or you will damage the VFD. So those are the most common error codes. Remember to check the troubleshooting chapter of your manual. It has a great deal more information to help you troubleshoot your variable frequency drive. And please remember to be extremely safe when working around electricity. If you were unable to resolve your problems, feel free to call an electrician or contact our technical support line for more assistance.